uh, I'm going to be uh, reading the Bible out of uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 15. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Uh, let's pray. Father God, um, Lord, I pray that you would just, um, Father, we thank you so much for your word that you give us in the Bible. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, help us to just soak up your, your scripture and apply it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, are we supposed to be the ones who are telling? Are we supposed to be the ones who are going? Father, um, give us joy in telling other people of you. Um, Father, uh, help us be part of um, the cure, uh, Lord. Um, Father, I pray that uh, whatever we hear this morning in church, that it would motivate us um, in what our actions are supposed to be. Uh, let our actions reflect what we say that it is that we believe in. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in Matthew 5.13 it says that uh, we as Christians are supposed to be salt and light in the world. Um, Tim Cummings and his daughter Ashley Kendall bring their own kind of spice <laughs> to the mission field. And as for light, I think that they're probably signal flares. <laughs> So Tim and Ashley together run Whirlwind Missions, um, and uh, last year they hosted over 683 volunteers and had 31 teams that came uh, to the Atlanta area that they hosted. Um, their website is the model for apartment ministry in America, and they had over 107 people accept Christ. Amen. So we just read in Romans about beautiful feet bringing good news. Uh, Tim, why don't you bring your beautiful feet up and share some good news with us. <laughs> we got power, Joe? Yes. I tell you what, I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling super fired up today, amen? Amen. We got to stand up. I'm going to teach you a song. This one from West Africa. Stand up for a second. We're going to sing one together. Come on, let me stand up. There's only two words to know. This, we don't have any West Africans here today, I don't think, right? No? West Africa. I'm an Africa guy. I'm an East Africa guy. This one from Nigeria, from the Yoruba tribe. Yoruba. Can you say Yoruba? Yoruba. There's only two words. The first one is Oshe. Can you say Oshe? Oshe. That means thank you. One of the secrets of life is thank, thanks. Be thankful. Amen? Amen. And the second word is Baba. Who do you think that is? Oh, and that means father in there, okay? So we gotta get a clap. Come on, let's go. Here you go. Go like this. Oh, They come to work with me. At this point, I have us go into Maasai mode. Can you say Maasai? Maasai. The Maasai people are one of the tribes I have in my country of Kenya. And when they're really trying to impress the ladies, what they will do is just jump straight up. Miss Millie, I'm expecting a great attitude and altitude for you today. So for those of you who feel like jumping, this is the time to do it, okay? You're feeling naughty? I see Pastor Bill's already. Now, usually when I'm doing this, we're in the fellowship hall at Doraville, so the ceilings are about only like at 9, 10 feet. 
Yeah, you got plenty of room there for space. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna say this side, just a few on this. I got a bass drum on this one. They gotta check it this out. Okay, here I go. Oh shit!
So it looks like this. You got it? Like this. Now, I used to in the old days when I would do this about praying for that friend of yours that's not a Christian. I used to just have people raise their hand while we were praying. Raise your hand if you're... In fact, you may remember in the old days when I was here, that's all I would do. I would say, raise your hand if you'll pray for this person every day. And a lot of people, most people would say, yes, I'll do that. But the father very clearly told me that wasn't enough. So, Because, you see, the devil does not want you to pray. Why don't you think the devil would want you to pray? Because why? Amen. And prayer is not a strategy. Prayer is the strategy. Now, why people drive me crazy? I've got to be straight up with you. All right, amen? Because why people think the only thing that we really need is another workbook. You know, we just had that workbook. We worked with that workbook. I love VBS, right, because it's got a lot of practical stuff in there. But a lot of times we think if we just fill out the workbook, that's going to be enough, right? And we don't really, you know, because see, I'm, I'm not from this country. I could talk white, but I'm not from here. I'm from Africa. And in America, this is one of the most can-do cultures anywhere. What does it mean if it's a can-do culture? What does that mean? Everybody man, we, we got this, man. We got it. We can do this. We don't like to ask people for help. Are you feeling me on this? We don't like that. And just we're kind of like lift yourself up by your bootstraps kind of guy like that. And if you're not careful, it gets into what? And we really don't need God's help either. We got this. We got the strategy. We got the demographic studies. We got the workbooks. But it's all about what? Starts with P. Prayer. Thank you, Pastor. It's just a pastor. Great. <laughs> Amen. So on this card, what I'm going to ask right now is that the Holy Spirit right now will bring into mind somebody that you know is not a Christian right now. That person is your personal mission field. Now, when people come up to work with me, and we've had hundreds and hundreds over the 20 years I've been doing this, well over four or 5,000 people come to work with us, and I always tell them, this is not your mission field. Your mission field is back home. Amen? So let's write down somebody that you know that you're really going to pray for, okay? Let's do that now. So fold a card in half and write their name on this. Fold a card like a tent. This is your card of intent. What if you have an intent? What does that mean? If you're intending to do something, what does that mean? You're going to do it. Amen? All right. So I got my friend here I've been praying for and working with for years. He's my best friend. And he's made a lot of progress. Amen? So this is my first thing. Yes, have you got your friend written down here? Have I did this? If you don't know somebody that's not a, uh, that's not a Christian, you don't know a non-Christian, man, you need to get out more. Amen? You feel me? Yes or no? Amen. All right. So this one, again, what does the R stand for in REACH? Remember. Remember. These are what I call prayer triggers. It's a prayer trigger. The, the evil one is one. All he's got to do is to make you forget. So the first finger, even though it's my little finger because I write my right hand, is to remember. So this one I'm asking you, when you go home, you will put this by your bed. Don't everybody have a little table by your bed? Have a little, no. little clock there, maybe a little lamp, maybe it's where you charge your phone, whatever like that. No. This is where that goes. So when you wake up, that's the first thing you see. And right before you go to sleep, that's the last thing you see. So when you have your prayer time, you can remember about this person. Amen? You feel me? Now, the second thing I want you to do, and I did this before, but this one is a more robust threat. This is another prayer trigger. Now, this one I need you to have a partner with, okay? A partner. This represents that person that you are praying for. If you smell it, can you smell it? It has been anointed with oil from the Holy Land. Can you smell that? It's called the Rose of Sharon. I always pray over this with Hebrew. Hebrew is one of the languages that I study, although I'm not super serious about it because it's really hard. But I always pray the ironic prayer. It is when Aaron was out in the desert with the Israelites and he asked the Lord, how do I pray for the people? And he said like this, 
Yevarekeka Adonai Baishmerika, Yaer Adonai Panavaleka, Vichuneka, Isa Adonai Panavaleka, Beasimlika Shalom, which means may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Has anybody ever seen this hand symbol before? Mm -hmm. What do we think that's from? <laughs> Leonard Nimoy was an Orthodox Jew. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. And when he would go to the synagogue, the rabbis would do a symbol like this. And if you looked at those symbols, it is forms what they call the tetragrammaton. I always think it's like a transfer of Tetragrammaton to the rescue! But it's four Hebrew letters, yod he vov he which is where we get the word Jehovah or Yahweh. Amen? But the Israelites would never call him that. They always called him Adonai, which in English starts with an L, Lord. All right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take this now. In the, the Hebrew tradition, they do this on your left wrist. It's not magic. I don't really care what it is. But I want you to join up with a partner. I want you to tie this on. And what we do is we do four knots. The Hebrews, when they do this with Rachel, and maybe Greg, you can see, you see a partner, if somebody's got this, you can hear one. And did you need a bag, Greg? Yeah, Jaden, I got my man right there. He's going to help you out. We do four. The first one stands for you. That's the closest one to you. Why? Where does the Holy Spirit live? Within you. You are the temple. You are the first person. Now, has anybody ever told you what the name for the Holy Spirit is? The first name is Holy, last name is Spirit, obviously. <laughs> it starts with an E. In Hebrew, the word for helper is Ezer. Ezer. Maybe you know the word Eliezer or Ebenezer. That means may God help us. But Ezer is helper. So when Jesus, who the Israelites, his fellow Israelites, would call Yeshua, when Yeshua would call him as Ezer. So the second nod is Ezer. Okay? For the Holy Spirit. The third nod is for Yeshua, who we would call Jesus. Jesus brought Yeshua. And the, and the fourth knot is for Adonai the Father. Amen? Amen. Now, I have some scissors at the back so y'all can trim that off. Hopefully it'll be tight enough. I don't know. But that was for remember. Okay? Everybody got that? Those have been prayed over and they have been anointed. So you can smell it. Can you smell a little bit? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> the second letter, E. Now, you already made a reference to this bill. If there was two things Baptists are good at, one of them is meeting, and the other one is, Amen. 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 The second letter E stands for eat, eat, E A T. As I was praying about this, and I'm going through the acronym, I say, I know this is what I want to do, Lord. What do you think E should be? But it says eating. I say eating. I say yes, eating, son, because that's something we Baptists do. Excellent day. Now, who is who here is not from this country, not traditionally from this country? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question in your country. Does business in your country normally happen, the big business that actually happens, does that normally happen in the office or when you're out to eat with that person somewhere? Which word does it normally go? In the office? Where does the big business actually happen? Is that the office or is it when you're out eating? What would you say, brother? I said office. In the office? Okay, so much for you. They're not going to listen again. <laughs> no, I'm not. What about y'all? Do y'all ever do business and stuff like that? It's an eating thing? In my, in my country, in Kenya, we can go to office. We go to talk. But when the deal is really cut, it's always not in the office. It's always when we're eating, drinking, sukuma, we go, whatever like that. Amen? So eating. Now, how many of y'all like presents? You like presents? Yes. <laughs> All right, you've got another president here. Again, another, I've had to pray long and hard about this. Amen? Amen. You're allowed to now, there's two of these, okay? One of these is for you. They said, no, Tim, I'm diabetic. Okay, you can just sniff it then if you don't. Get it. <laughs> but you're allowed to eat your little tiny snicker bar right there. It's full of fun. And then I want to ask you about this. Now, see your... 
you're super blessed because you've got an M&M. So there's a very few of those. It's like a super trophy. And, okay, you can just put that back in your thing. Don't eat it. If you're allergic, don't eat it. Okay? Again, when I give you a sticker bar, you need a sticker bar, you're like, hey, man, it's all right. I like this tip guy. Do you know that friend that you're praying for, you come up there and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I got a sticker bar for you. Do you think they're going to say, no, I don't want your candy bar? Do you think they're going to say that? No, no, no. Oh, no. What's that? You don't like me? You going to give me candy? No. No. All right? It's, it's, it's very non-threatening. Are you feeling me? So this is part of your homework. H stands for homework. Not really, but it's kind of a good way. All right, so that is eating. And now, again, in my country, we want to make an impact on somebody. We invite them to eat. Or y'all, any y'all do that? Invite people to eat? No, never. Again, that person that you're thinking for praying for, then say, hey, man, you want to come out? I'll buy you lunch. All right, it may cost 10 bucks. I don't know. It's getting more expensive. You can take them somewhere cheaper. I don't know. Right? But the idea is you take them somewhere where they are what? It's non-threatening or it's kind of fun and you feel like you've been invited something to nice. Just like when I give you a piece of candy, nobody's going to say, no, I didn't do it. No, you know what right? Now, later on, when I'm on H, I'm going to show you some other stuff here. But this is non-threatening. Everybody think you can do this? Can you hand out a piece of candy to somebody? Everybody's okay with that so far? Not yet. This means, yes, I can do that. If you're scared to hand out a piece of candy, man, I don't know what you do during hell. Amen? <laughs> no, I can't see these children. All right. All right, the next one I want to do is A. And A stands for accept. A-C-C-E-P-T. Accept. And who do you think we are getting people to try to accept? Who? Who? Jesus. Who, who is that again? Jesus. Thank you, Jaden. Now. Turn the bag over. This is how I normally teach evangelism in about one minute. Amen? Amen. All right, here we go. So turn the bag over. It's a visual thing, but you can draw pictures, but you can also write it down. The first one we do are our hands like a heart. Can everybody do our hands like a heart? It's a heart. I <laughs> got it. <laughs> it's a good one. Man. All right. And what do you think that is? God what? God loves you. So draw a little heart there. And next to it, put God loves you. God loves you. Now, the universal symbol for we've done something naughty is what? What is this? Yeah. Yeah. You done something naughty. Your mama comes in there and does something like this. It's not like, oh, you've been such a good boy. <laughs> what does this mean? Shame on you. Shame on you. So you can draw a finger or something like that. And you will say, we've all done bad things. We've all done bad things. We've all been naughty. Usually with the kids, I just say, we've all been naughty. So you can write down naughty, bad things, whatever. Okay? So then something had to happen in order to take away those naughty things. And what was that? Then I draw a cross. And I have everybody do their fingers like this. Can you do your fingers like this? Can you do your fingers like this? Thank you. Why am I asking you to do this? Because you are using your right hemisphere of your brain. You're seeing it in pictures. You have just doubled your ability to remember something. And what's R stand for? Remember. And what does E stand for? I'm getting hungry already. So you draw a cross. And you can just put cross there. And who died on the cross? Jesus. Again, that's what we're trying to accept. And then I have the kids do this motion. So what's this doing? You're taking something away, right? So what on that cross? He takes it away. So do a, a motion like that or whatever. Take away. So something is taken away. And what is taken away? Sin. And what is sin? Those bad things we've done. So if you think about what those bad things are, that's your sin. Amen? And then something's taken away and then something comes back. So you can think of this motion and then this motion. So the next one is come back or come in. All right. And who came in? And you can draw a J on that one too. Who comes in? Jesus. Thank you, Jaden. And then the last one is we just point straight up. So what happens? We go to where? Heaven. Heaven. So you can just point straight up, an arrow straight up, and then you can say heaven. Now, that took maybe two minutes. 
So when I lead them in the sinner's prayer, I will say something like this. So go ahead and close your eyes for just a moment. And say, you can imagine that you're with your friend there. You can say, well, you may think Christianity is complicated. It's really not. What it comes down to is we say something like this. Jesus, and you repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. thank you for loving me. Let's go ahead and close. Everybody close your eyes like you're praying for a second, okay? Close your eyes like you're praying. Imagine that you're there with your friend, okay? God loves you. So he's saying, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Sorry for the bad things that I've done. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Take away my sin. Come into my heart so I can live with you forever in heaven. Amen. All right, eyes open. Let's see how much we can remember. God, what's the first one? God loves you. Sorry for the bad things. What? Amen. So again, you do these actions, you draw those pictures, and all that's going to reinforce that into your right hemisphere so it's easier for you to R, which stands for. E, which stands for, A, which stands for, and C, you flip your bag back over, and that is concerned, concerned. Raise your hand if I have prayed with you personally today. Amen. Whenever, and it's Doc, right? Then else you say Doc? I want everybody to look at Doc's hand for a second. Man, when I see something like that, Doc... Holy Spirit starts going like this. Ding, 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 ding. I see like red flashing lights. Why? Because that right there is what I call a what? In, in, in church, what do we call something like that? A what? A prayer, request. a prayer request. That is a prayer request. When I go around and I'm talking to people and they say, I don't really have much energy. I'm not feeling that great today. I've got this boo-boo, whatever. What do I hear in my head? Prayer. Ding, ding, ding. It's a what? Prayer. And what do I do then? Now, Doc, you've been there. That just happened this week. Did anybody else come and pray with you at church today? Oh, look at him. and you Look, you see a boo-boo like that. He's at church. Why hasn't anybody prayed for him? Because normally it's not like you're not afraid. It's not like you're against praying. It just doesn't become a habit. Now, this is a way of life for me. Amen? Amen? When I am at Walmart, anybody go to Walmart? <laughs> Amen? And I'm checking out, and I have two ladies in front of me. This happened to me just recently. They were talking about their son that was in a wreck. What does that sound like, kids? Prayer Again, what do I hear? Ding, 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 ding. Holy Spirit going, hey, 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 son, wake up, wake up, wake up, son, wake up. That's it. And I say, ladies, I don't mean to interfere, but I just heard that your son was in a wreck. I'd like to pray for you. Now, let me tell you, if their mom is in the hospital, their son be sick, they got in a wreck, I don't care whether they're Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever, atheist, when their mom is in the hospital, and I say, I'd like to pray for your mama, they don't say, oh, no, don't you pray for me, I'm Hindu, man, I know you're Christian, man, I don't want you to be, you think I've ever heard that? No, C is concerned. You have to be concerned. Now, in the old days, now, I'm not saying that you're old. Bill. Because why? I'm getting AARP stuff in the mail all the time, man. Amen? But in the old days, when we did evangelism, what we would do is this. We would go to the door. We would knock on it. We would say this. Hi, my name's Tim. I just have one question for you. If you were to die tonight, would you know where you're going to spend eternity? And the subtext is, because he's going to hell, Jack! Now, we don't say that part, but that's kind of what they're intimating. I don't do that anymore. That had some limited success. But let me tell you what is successful is when they say something that sounds like a prayer request or they got an obvious boo-boo like Brother Doc over there, I stop and I pray for them. And do you know what they say? Doc, what do you say when I pray for you? You said, tell me something. Doc can't hear me very well, but anyway... He says, thank you for that. I appreciate that. That meant a lot to me. I really appreciate that. Amen? Amen. How many got a cell phone here? You got a cell phone? Yeah. Nobody's got a cell phone? 
All right, look, you want to talk about powerful evangelism, too? This, this is for the devil, too, isn't it? We got to sanctify this thing, isn't it? <laughs> do you have that person that you're praying for on your phone? Yes. You do? Okay. If you do, if you do not, that's okay. If you do, I want you to send them a text right now. Pick up your phone, send them a text. If you don't have their number, you need to get to know them a little bit better, okay? Well, so you, so you say, listen, man, I'd like to take you out to eat, man. Let me make sure I get your number so that I can, you know, call you and make sure we're there at the same place. They're all going to do just like Bill did. They're going to go like this. Yeah, you're right, man, because, you know, it's a cell phone. We need it. And this is what I want you to say. Thinking about you, thinking about you, everything okay, question mark. That's all you say. Thinking about you, everything okay. Now, when I ask, is everything okay, what is that showing you? See, concern. Now, they may say, yeah, everything's great, Tim. I'm glad to see that. Or they may say, you know what? Like Ashley, this morning text, you know what? I had a, I had a fall. I, I hurt my knee. What does that sound like? A prayer request. What does that show in concern? Amen? So all you have to do with that person is say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Is everything okay? You don't have to get the big black Bible because you're going to hell and bam. You don't have to do the impact therapy. Amen. All you say is what? I was thinking about you. Everything okay? Again, what's that showing? Stands for C is what? Concern. Concern. R means? Remember. E. E. A. C. And the final one, which is H, is hand. Hand. Now again, in my country, in Kenya, we are gift-giving culture. We like to give people things. Amen? How about anybody else in here? Anybody else like to get a present? Did you like the little snicker bar? Yes, it's nice, right? It's still tasty. It's still really chocolate and goodness. Amen? <laughs> We're going to hand them something. Now, I'm a research guy, okay? What do you do if you research something? What does that mean, you research something? What does that mean? You're looking it up. Do you know what the number one reason why people come to church for the first time is? What do you think that is? The number one reason. Someone invited them. Any other? We got invitation. What else? Anybody else? A lot will say, well, you know, we got a special speaker coming in. Or we're going to have a big whatever. Look. You've got to get in the hand and uh, get in the habit of handing them something. You hand them something. You're giving a helping hand. See, it's more like the hand that you're helping hand, handing somebody. You know, it's a lot of things that you can help with this, right? You say, listen, this is an invitation to you come to my church. And look, what's this? <laughs> That's you. This is a big print right here. What is this? I Right? And look, I've got some small ones here too. Right? And what are these? They're about small Bibles, right? For the kids. They say, now there's two pieces of this. I didn't get the first, the second one because I'm counting on this. I don't know, I could be wrong in this bit. The first one is listen, when I'm inviting you to our church, come on our church, be my guest. Okay, you're being someone's guest, right? We've got a free. Bible for you. And the other piece when I was praying about this, Lord, the Lord said, and I had a cup of coffee. And I don't know, does anybody in this place in their Sunday school class do coffee? That's what I thought. That's why I didn't get it. So you say, you come to our church. We're going to give you a free Bible. So we've got some different kinds. And you get a free cup of coffee. Again, that's sort of like going along the line of a snicker bar. You're giving them something. You're not yelling at them. All you're doing is, I am what? Inviting you, and you are handing them something so they can look at this. They can see what this goes on. Now, have any of y'all been to a Catholic church before? Yeah. Have you ever been to a Hindu service before? Yeah. Buddhist? Yeah. Muslim? Yeah. See, now, we, we think it's everybody's going to understand this church stuff. No, that's not true, because most of America is now unchurched. What does that mean if you're unchurched? You don't go to church. So they have no idea what church is like. They have no idea what's going to happen. None. And if you're Baptist, they think, well, he's got a holy will, kind of holy baby, you know, we don't know that. They can look at this sort of stuff, and this takes some fear away. They can look and see what's going on. Amen? They see this sort of stuff. What is this? Well, I love the symbology here. What is this? 
Can you see that on your thing? What is it? Family. Everybody's holding hands. They're looking good. They, you know, they think, you know what? I, my family's had some issues. I'd like to have a, a better family. They, they look at they look. It's a couple's wedding shower. That's nice. They, you know, and what is this showing them? That we what? Love each other, right? Amen? And I can tell you what. Most churches that I go to are not in a growing mode. Rockridge, whenever I come here, it seems like there's more people that I haven't seen before. Amen? And why do you think that is? It's because of stuff like this, man. Unfortunately, again, because most of the people I work with are unchurched, unfortunately, they think of most Christians like this. <laughs> you get your act together. You got to stop doing that non stuff. Man, man that, that, we do not argue them into the kingdom, okay? Argue not concerning God. You don't argue them. What do you do? You what? Love you love them into the kingdom. And again, that's the part where I was saying first is that people have been non-Christian I mean, Christians for so long. We've forgotten about the loneliness. We've forgotten about what happens if something really bad happens. Man, something bad happens in this church. What happens? And we're praying for you. We're doing there. Are you okay? Can I take you somewhere? Can I bring some food to you, man? That is not normal. But when they think about church, this is what they think about. That it's like this. So H stands for what? Hand them something. You're being, let's go from the beginning again. R is? Remember. Remember. E is? E. A is? Accept. C is? Turn. And H is? Yeah. Hand them something. Can you remember that? Amen? Yeah. All right. Now, I'm a prayer guy. What did I say was the strategy? Prayer. 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 Now, you know, this gets me, Pastor. I don't know. You did tell me if this is happening to you. Where you go to a prayer conference and they talk about prayer the whole time. And about the last five minutes, they say, oh, yeah, we should pray because this is a prayer conference. Or, am I making this up? But before I do this, and I've done this before with y'all, how many of y'all would say stress is a significant part of your life? Stress. Any of y'all deal with stress? How many of y'all have trouble going to sleep at night? Any of y'all do that? Jaden? Yeah. How many of y'all wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep? Now, see, most of the time I'm doing this exercise, it's because it's all these kids and they're coming and they're sleeping on the floor at a church and stuff like that, so they don't sleep very well. So I show this how this, but I've seen over time of what a serious piece this is. Now, we don't have the little kids here, and I would have loved to have had them in there. I should have been more strong with that. But what gets me is I will have all these little kids up here, first, second, third grade. I'll say, how many of y'all have say stress is a significant part of your, of your life? And I have all these little kids raising their hands. I'm like, man, you're third grade. I'm so stressed out. Do you know what the kids in the Cab County have been doing this week? Testing. Testing. And let me tell you, the, chip, the teachers feel like they don't get paid as much if their, te if their class doesn't do well. They're under enormous stress. Now, I don't remember... Greg, when we were little kids, I don't remember us having to take all those tests too much. And they certainly were making it sound like if you don't do well on this test, man, your whole future's screwed up. Are you feeling me? Yeah. You know, we got a lot of suicides going in our, in our country right now. You know what the, one of the countries, I'm not sure if it's at the top, but one of them is Japan. Were you aware of that? Yeah. And it's because of this testing stuff. It is so bad now that they have forests which are basically, in Japan, I don't remember the Japanese word for it, but it's basically called a death forest. And what happens is they go through college, they have this test, and if they don't do well on that test, basically they don't get to work for one of the major firms, and so they just feel like their whole life is gone, and they go out into those forests and they hang themselves. Did y'all, are y'all aware of that? Isn't that horrible? And they have a whole support groups of people in Japan that just to, to pray for those people that's that. Has anybody here have any friend of theirs that's committed suicide here in the States? Yeah, it's it's and it's it, it's terrible. I had one of my very close friends, Ian North, had two of his friends last week commit suicide. One was a young Latino boy, and the other one was like a, a woman about my age. He used to go and run around, run with, and do he was long distance races. And then when you see something like that happen, what do you think we ask ourselves? What? What could what? What could I have done to prevent that? Now that C, again, what does C stand for? Yes, Listen, if you start seeing some kid or friend of yours that just always looks sad, always looks stressed out, you should show some what? And say, listen, you ever feel so dark that you start feeling like it's just, you call me. Has anybody ever talked somebody out of committing suicide? 
I have. I certainly did. I was in the middle of watching a movie. My phone, I've always got it on Do Not Disturb. For some reason, it rang. Tim, I'm not feeling well. I feel like I may do something bad to myself. <laughs> this one, I'm looking at this like, Jesse, I'll be right back. I, I need to go outside and have a talk. Amen? But I stress that with my friends. If you ever start feeling that bad, you call me. You call me. And again, what is that show? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to do this relaxation. I know I'm going over time. You expected me to go over time, so I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, in my country, we're not really getting started about, about this long. You look, if you're going to walk to church for two hours and you have an hour service, they think I didn't get my walking now. Amen? Amen. This is only going to take a few minutes, so hang on. Let's do this together, and then we'll stop. Amen? Everybody okay? Yeah. Now, when Coach said leave it on the field, what does that mean? Leave it on the field. Give it all. Give it all. Now, it's got a little bit different concept now, Bill. That's the way they always told us. So you, you give your 100%. Nowadays, Jaden, if coach was to tell you leave it on the field, what does that mean now? They normally would say, whatever happens on the field, just leave it there and don't take it home. That's how they see it now. But for us, it was always, man, you give it 100%. So I don't know what your prayer life is like, but let's ramp this thing up now. Amen? Are you feeling me on this? Because prayer is not what? A strategy. Prayer is what? The strategy. Amen. So what I want us to do, go ahead and take a really good deep breath all the way in. And as you exhale, go ahead and close your eyes. Close your eyes. So this is the prayer time. So everybody closes your eyes. Close your eyes. I know some of y'all may not want to do that. That's okay. Just do it anyway. Amen. Now, for those, when I'm teaching this exercise for people that can't sleep, what we'll do is what's called progressive relaxation. We do a visualization on Jesus. So first thing you do, take another really good deep breath all in. Now, as you think about the muscles in your feet and your calves and your thighs and just any tension that you have in your legs, just let them go slide. Anybody that's got their eyes open, I can see you. So close your eyes and do this. Amen? Thank you. Another really good deep breath. Follow in. Think about the muscles in your stomach and your chest and just any tension that you have in your stomach or chest muscle. Again, just let them go slack. Completely relax. No tension at all. Another really good deep breath. Follow in. Think about the muscles in your hands, your forearms, your biceps and shoulders, any tension you have in your arms, just let them go slack like a dish towel. Again, close your eyes. Thank you. Another really good deep breath all in. And think about the muscles in your neck. You can kind of roll your neck around if you want to. That's why when we were in school, they always said to bow your head and close your eyes. When you bow your head, you relax the muscles in my neck, or whatever's the most comfortable for you is fine. When you close your eyes, the back third of your brain, which tells the occipital lobe, begins to slow down. And a really good deep breath. Follow in. And think about the muscles in your jaws, around your cheeks, your lips, your forehead, your scalp muscles, and any tension you have in any of your facial muscles. Again, just let them droop. Soft like putty. Another really good deep breath. Follow in. I want you to scan yourself in the very top of your head, down through your face, down your neck, down your arms, down your chest and stomach, and down your thighs and calves, all the way down to the very bottom. So we call it going into our inside world. If you're back home, if you're having trouble sleeping, you just do this relaxation time, one, two, ten, how many times you do it, that'll be fine, then you would go into a deep sleep. We're not going to sleep right now. Now it's time to concentrate on Jesus, to focus on Jesus now. Now, if you believe what Jesus said in the Bible, I want you to nod your head. Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, Jesus said, where two or more gather, I am there with you. So I want you to repeat over in your mind, over and over again, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. It's not a theory. It's not a concept. Jesus is here. That's why I like we've got a little bit extra room between the rows. So he could come up and down those rows and he put his hand and blessing on your head. Jesus is here. I want you to think about a time you were especially close to Jesus. It might have been at a service. It might have been on a mission trip. It might have been on a retreat. It might have been in a choir. It might have been during some service. But when you've got that time and Jesus was especially close to your mind, I want you to nod your head. I know exactly when that was, too. Now, I want you to imagine that you can see around the room there. I want you to imagine that you can see who the people were that were around you where you were, where that place, kind of look, man. And it's from some people say, well, I don't really see anything when I close my eyes. They just describe it in words, what it was like. 
And I especially want you to focus on what it felt like when you were that close to Jesus. What was the feeling that you had? I want the scene to shift, and I want you to imagine that you're seeing a picture of Jesus now. Again, if you don't see any pictures that well, then just describe. What does it look like? Well, he's got long brown hair. He's got a beard. I always focus on his eyes. It just looks like he's so in love with you. And as you're looking at him, he's just giving you that look like somebody had seen you in a long time, man. Like your grandparents, somebody used to look at you. He comes over there and he just gives you the biggest hug because he loves you so much, kids. And for those of your parents, you've got to get the feeling of this because how much I love my children and my grandchildren, that is how he feels about you. And I want you to imagine if your grandchildren just walked right by you, didn't greet you, didn't say anything, if that's how Jesus feels that we don't talk to him. So you've got him right there. I just want you to tell him thank you. Thank you. I don't know what your health situation is right now. I don't know what injury you may be recovering from, but I want you to tell about thank you for your good health. Amen? Thank you for that. Thank you for your parents. Let me tell you, if your parents, your friends were Muslim, you went to school in Muslim school, all your friends were Muslim, what religion do you think you would be? Thank you for our country. Thank you for your friends. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for VBS. Thank you for our choirs. Tell him thank you. Now I want you to think about something that you're worried about. And that usually comes into one of three things. Either it's a money thing. Man, how am I going to pay for this? It's a health thing. you got test results or somebody that you know is not doing well. Or it's a relationship thing. We used to be so close, but now every time I'm around, I just feel this tension. When you got that thing that you're worried about in your mind, I want you to nod your head. I know exactly what you're talking about, Tim. Listen, I don't know if y'all got the memo, but he is still in the miracle working business. Give that to him. Tell them I'm so tired of worrying about this stuff. Worrying is a fiction. You do not know what's even going to happen five minutes from now. So how do you know what's going to happen to all this stuff? It's just stories you talk about. Replace worry with hope. If you're going to tell yourself stories in the future, tell yourself all the great things that can happen. Give it to Jesus. Amen. And right now, I want you to think about that person that you know is not a Christian. That person that's represented by that red thread. I want you to see that person the last time you went to them. I want you to imagine where it was, whether it was in school, at your office. And I just want you to ask Jesus, how can I reach that person for you, Lord? And I want you to practice something that's a little bit different. It's what I call conversational prayer. Jesus can talk to us through the Bible. He can talk to us through our pastors and our Sunday school teachers. He can talk to us through our feelings. Man, if you know you shouldn't do it, don't do it. And he can also talk to us through our imagination. And I want you just to give the Holy Spirit a chance to use your imagination. I want you to imagine when you ask him, how can I reach this person? What might he say? It's like, what would Jesus do? Remember those bracelets? What would Jesus say? What would he say? And just listen to him for a second. He says, you know what? Tim was right. Yeah, I can take him out to eat. I'll make sure I text him. Maybe I can give him a little something. I can hand him something. Maybe I can just ask him if everything's okay. What might he say to you? Now, if there's one piece that has completely transformed my spiritual life, it's this one. Just imagining what he would say to me. A lot of times I get thoughts from him. I'm like, where did that come from? It's coming from Azir, the Holy Spirit. And if that person asks you about that red thread, you just tell them, it's my prayer trigger. Can I pray for you? If you got an idea what that should be, what that is about to reach in that person again, I want you to nod your head. What that might be. Maybe it's in a card. Maybe it's a little little gift. I like the idea of handing him something. Father, I thank you for Rockbridge Baptist Church. I thank you for when I came up the driveway. He's not dead. He's risen. Jesus is here. Jesus, I thank you for being here today. Thank you, Ezra. Tell it out. Thank you, Father. Lord, as we think about that person that we know is not a Christian now, I realize that that's our personal mission field. My guess is nobody else has that name except for you. That as we look at that little card next to our bed every day, we're going to think about that person. We're going to pray for them. As we think about what that red thread is, we're going to pray for that person. Maybe every single time I look at that, when I'm driving, when I'm washing my hands, I'm going to think about that person. I'm going to love that person. Father, we thank you that you loved us first. Because frankly, we kind of suck. We're really not that great. Thank you for coming and taking away all those sins. 
And she went through all that excruciating thing to die for us to do that. The only religion that had somebody else do the work for us. Every other religion on the planet, they have to do their own work. Father, just help us to be better every day, more loving, more concerned. Help us to remember these ideas, take them out to eat, help them to accept you, be concerned for people, remember to hand them things. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Now give it up for Jesus, guys. Amen. So I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you all. I know you had stayed later. That's just the way it is. Pastor Bill.